Good day everyone! Welcome back to my channel and for today, I will be um, introducing a new topic for Applied Business Tools and Technology in Hospitality Management. So for today, um, in the past lesson, kasi nito, we discussed about different um, business terms and we reviewed about different business terms and also different business terminal technologies that were um, being used in hospitality industry. So for today, we will discuss about the digital tourism landscape. So here, um, hindi na lang siya, although under ng tourism is hospitality, but um, we will um, um, focus more in the tourism or in a general scope. So for um, at the end of this lesson, I hope that you will be able to analyze the drivers of innovation and technological change in the digital tourism landscape. So we'll see uh, paano ba nag yung mula before, yung mga times before, paano na-develop yung digital tourism landscape natin. What else? Explain and evaluate the components of IT in tourism using a digital tourism ecosystem perspective and explain the diffusion of innovation theory. So again, I will be um, dividing this lesson into two. The first one is we will discuss the um, digital tourism uh, ecosystem and the second part would be the diffusion of innovation theory. So before that, okay, let's define first what is digital tourism. So digital tourism, uh, from the word, when we say tourism, diba? So um, it's, it could be about travel or about tourists. Okay. Um, when we say digital or it digitized natin, ibig sabihin there would be some sort of technology involved. And also, um, kumbaga medyo modernized way on to, to, on the winterism. So what what happens here? So it takes travelers to a different kind of tourist experience. So in digital tourism, compared to the traditional tourism that we have, again, it it will give you a different different kind of experience as a tourist. What else? It is a digital support provided to travelers before, during, and after the travel activity. So, kinocomprise then ng digital tourism ang um, pagsusupport when it comes to the technologies and whatever digital support that they can provide before ka pa lang mag-travel, during your travel, and even after your travel. And you, you can still have or you can still feel the support from the companies that you are that they're using digital tourism what else it provides a tech-driven way to research and plan as well as experience their holiday travels so ito naman syempre um from the word digitize nga or digital so it is more on um tech driven so we can see different um technologies we will learn about different technologies that we're going to use or na utilize natin in um in traveling. So digital tourism services may vary. Ayan, pwede, um it could provide recommendations to find the appropriate accommodation, di ba? So nahanap ka ng um a hotel mo or inn or um what do you call that? So we on so kung um uh, transient houses. So yun, so it could be on that part to help you as a traveler to plan your itinerary. It could also be, kasama din sa digital tourism, ang mga applications that you can install on your phone to serve as a mobile tour guide. Diba? So, yun. So, ako, I have experienced um, this before, prior to pandemic. So, lalo na kung wala ka talaga alam sa isang particular na place. For example, sa Hong Kong. So, that is my first um, travel where in um, ako lang talaga nag-discover mag-isa kung paano makakapunta into this particular place using the, kasi ma, ma, ano eh, parang, you can use the MTR or sa atin MRT. So yun, so from, from shifting from one place to another, o kaya mga bus, o kaya tram. So yun, so but um, you have to know, uh, di ba, kung saan bang station ka papasok, saan ka, asan yung station na ito, ganyan. So, you can use their MTR app 
So yun, and then um they, you can also syempre yun, mga Google so, yun, so it can say, um you can download the, the different mobile applications to help you in your um sa inyong pagka travel so yun, it could also be the capability to explore all the holiday photos the traveler took once he or she reaches home. So I also um read before, so it's part of the digital tourism. Um dahil nga wala pa akong idea what where can I go in Hong Kong? So alam ko naman Disneyland ganyan, pero din pa lang Ocean Park, meron ding mga museum, so yun. So what did I do? So I read different blogs. It's a written blog. And then nakalagay doon talaga lahat how to go here from there, ganun. Tapos Ay, yung mga, yung mga scene sa Hello, Love, Goodbye, gano'n. So, I've uh, binasa ko din yun. So, yun, para mapuntahan ko yun. Lahat so, yun. So, through that, again, it's a part of digital tourism. So, ako na nag-travel, na-experience ko na yun, I posted it on a social media or kung meron man akong sarili kong blog or um, website. So, yun. So, it can help other people to know how will I go there? And also yung mga um, uh, tipid tips, ayan, yung mga budgetarian tips where in, kung saan ka mas makakamura. For example, I also read um, kung saan ako makakamura na mag-convert ng dollar to Hong Kong dollars. Ayan. So kasi they, they advise na hindi siya from peso to HKD kasi mura lang yung um, uh, conversion. So, Doing mo dito, mag-convert mo ng dollars pag inodan siya ka mag And there are some places there na mas, um, kumbaga parang mas mataas yung conversion. So, mas malaki yung marapin mo. So, ganun siya. So, yun. So, you can read all of those online. So, yun. So, and also, di ba, we, because of our tech-driven society and environment, it is really advisable that tourism-related business owners should invest in digital presence. So, sabi nga, may nagsabi nga na um, business person that if your business is not online, then you're out of the business. Kasi halos sa talaga ng business ngayon should have digital presence. So, it is no longer viable not to be seen online, although your digital presence should be thought out clearly. Should be creative, clever, compelling, and persuasive. Again, kasi marami na rin talagang gumagamit or nagkakaroon ng presence on their businesses or in, in kahit ano pang business yan, in an online setup. Um, next, let's define what travel technology is. So, travel technology, or also known as hospitality automation and tourism technology. So, when you say automate, diba? so it's more on um, putting it in a digital, digital setup, putting in a technology. When we say travel technology, it is the application of information and communications technology or ICT or and IT to provide information and support for the hospitality, tourism, and travel industry. So example nito yan ng travel technology natin would be um, flight tracking and originally kasi ang travel technology before it was aso uh, associated with the uh, Airlines Industry Computer Reservation System or CRS. So, di ba, um, you will just go online. Before kasi, um, bibili ka pa ng ticket na limawa sa mga to-go, yung mga uh, travel agencies, ganyan. Pero nagkaroon na rin ng trend na you can book online na. So, yun. So, kung may website na itong particular na um, uh, air airline na to, so, yun. So, pwede ka na lang mag-book doon. Or, um, Pwede ka naman uh, sa mga travel aggregators, so mag Expedia ka, magbooking.com ka, doon na makikita mo yung different um, airlines offering flights into this particular area or this country. So yun, so again, right now, travel technology has added more virtual tourism and, or technologies for virtual tours. And so travel technology also is synonymous with e-travel and electronic travel or e-tourism. So, ang service that we are providing is analysis, design, and information, implementation and application of e-commerce and, and information technology solutions in the industry. It also includes the analysis of different customer relationship management, market structures, and economic processes. So, hindi na lang siya yung typical na there would be in e-travel or nagamitin itong um, 
technology for ethereism but kasama na lahat pati customer relationship management diba yung mga CRMs na uh, pinag-aralan natin in the past lesson um how are you going to market your products or services and everything so yun nandun na siya sa travel technology ang travel technology then is a collection of different systems to manage and monitor travel dahil nakasakop niya na lahat such as flight tracking and travel tracking systems so alam mo kung kailan and makikita mo na doon kung kailan yung flight mo whatever it is you know and so in a different context travel technology is a technology to be used by travelers such as satellite internet connections and the creation of laptops that are lightweight and the development of universal power supplies so ito naman parang mga um ito yung perception in travel technology before pa so yun but again it was added and added with different um virtual tourism pa or e um e travel or e tourism next topic is about the digital technological environment so here we will learn about the digital uh the reason ecosystem when we say ecosystem and it's um some sort of environment so here we will learn the digital tourism environment what are the um things present um when we um undergo when we see a or when we utilize digital tourism when you when you're going to look at it um we have inspiration so inspiration will proceed to transaction you will proceed to experience and reflection and so on and so forth so it's a cycle and in this cycle nakapaloob yung different travel technologies or digital or ethereism that were being utilized so let's start first with inspiration so here in inspiration digital ecosystem delivers information in a variety of forms such as textual content picture and video that inform and inspire people so in the digital tourism ecosystem at first parang before you will be persuaded to go or a travel diba baka kita ka muna ng pwedeng may picture sa facebook diba at tendang kuha ng ng mga picture ibaw ng aurora borealis or sa Iceland o sa kung saan mang um, Switzerland, Netherlands o so kung saan mang bansa, di ba? So yun, tapos there, ayan, if, um, kumbaga parang mostly ang purpose noong mga gano'n na ginagawa. Lalo yung mga nag-vlog, yung trip to, ganyan. So yun, so it, um, help, uh, it gives information and I, I love those blogs na, or the blogs then na, um, they will give tips on where to go, where to buy this, ano yung mga pwedeng bilhin, ano yung mga kakainin, ganyan, for you to know something before you go there sa isang foreign country. So, and syempre, ang end point naman nun, especially sa mga, um, yung mga tourist spots talaga na nag-invest talaga in digital tourism, is to inspire people to go in their place. So, so that is the first one. So it's the inspiration. Next is, and so after inspiration, we have transaction. Temporary transaction, and these are travel intermediaries and other support travel transactions when travelers make the purchase. So syempre, after you get inspired, you will not proceed to the transaction. So you will not decide, okay, I will go there. Or pagkikipunan mo. And so, in the transaction process, there will be different travel intermediaries and basta online ng mga, um, na mga wedding service provider that will support your travel transactions. Especially kapag nagbibigay ka rin ng mga tickets, magbabayad is in the days magbubuka ng particular hotel, magbubuka ng flight mo, so, yun, so there are different travel um, support travel transactions. So after the transaction, we have this experience. And here in the inspiration, we will have different entities na pwedeng um, mag-take part para magkaroon ka, na, ma-inspire ka, or you can be informed and inspired. How? Through, through suppliers, travelers, other travelers, other intermediaries, even the governments, ayan, halimbawa, 
yung government natin, di ba, sa Department of Tourism para marami na hikayat ng mga ibang um, lahi na pumunta sa place natin. In the same way, yung ibang government din sa ibang country, ganun din yung ginagawa nila. So, they are also interesting in the tourism. So, yun. So, those are um, the entities that were being used or yung mga nag, um, nasa ecosystem, nasa environment na nag um, kumbaga uh, like to take part for us to be informed and be inspired. And also, we're going to use, and in the transaction naman, we will be using devices. Ayan. And also for the inspiration, um, we'll use our desktops, smart devices, mobile devices, digital kiosks, especially when you're doing different transactions. So, yun. so you can also do, we, can, we also have different touch points wherein um, you can go to different websites search engines, mobile apps, we use that for different transactions, email, telephone, and face-to-face. So, yeah. so, in the inspiration also, we have different communities such as social networks, blogs, reviews for this particular um, tourism or particular hotel, diba? forums, wikis, local experts, and media sharing. So, yeah. so, these take part on the inspiration and the transaction. How about the experience? So after your transaction, okay, you will now have the experience. So various entities use technologies to support and enhance the tourism experiences during the trip. So, yun. so for example, a malaking part in our experience is the Instagram, our Facebook accounts. So, yun. so um, mas ine-enhance ng mga e-tourist or ng mga e-tech or sorry, e-travel ng mga companies yung experience mo. Dati kasi, di ba, wala nyo picture-picture, parang ganyan. Yung mga picture mo, yung mga, ano pa, papaprint pa, yung mga ganyan. Pero ngayon kasi, you can do it instantly. You can check in sa Disneyland, you can check in wherever tourist spot you are in. So, yun. So, that is what happens in the experience. And also, ayan, syempre, ang kasama dyan is different um, social networks, ayan, ito. And, um, content. Ayan. So, you can now use different um, uh, different content like maps and navigation for you to be more um, ma-enhance. Magkaroon ng, um, ng magkaroon ng hulay or parang magkaroon ng additional experience ikaw. Diba? Lalo na kung tinatrace mo lang kung saan ka pupunta and that you're just using the maps. So, so that is for the experience. And last one is the reflection. So it allows travelers to reflect on, document, and share travel experiences. And so I love this. For example, if you will be going to make blogs, you review websites and social network. So you're going to um to share what you have experienced. Uh, yung mga kung paano pumunta dito, ano yung mga pending sakyan, mga ganyan. And the Meron kasing mga video like, for example, tricycle. Wala namang tricycle na sa ibang bansa. So parang kung nasa, nandito ako sa Philippines, parang you can say, you, can, you may try to ride a tricycle para, di ba, para, para, para karoon sila ng bagong experience. So, sa Thailand, you can ride tuk-tuk. So yun, so sobrang bilis to, na parang tricycle din. And whatever. So yun, so what, you, you can do reflection para, again, you, it will go back to the inspiration. It can keep the person informed and inspired through the reflection that you do through your social media or your website. So, yeah. so that is the digital tourism ecosystem. So here in the digital tourism ecosystem, we also have different um, types of companies or technology that were being used. So first, there are some companies that they are considered as, or technologies that are considered as catalyzers. So when we say catalyst, um, parang in a in science, parang catalyst is it will strike or change, parang ganon. So yun, so here it increases uh, catalyzers increase the survival chances of entities by supporting the evolution of a living functioning system. So they introduced something. Example nito is aviation. So, dati, di ba, hindi naman nakakalipad yung mga tao. 
And then, ayan, si Wilbur and Or- Orville Wright, when they invented the airplane, ang nasa isip lang nila ang goal nila is to make us fly. May experience natin na lumipad. So, yun. So, they, ibang catalyzers. Alam mo yun, yung from, hindi naman talaga nakakalipad yung mga tao. To, you discovered something na na-achieve natin yun. So, yun. so, next is dictators. Ayan. So, yung mga dictators naman, they aim to own or control a large portion of ecosystem. For example, yung mga Google search. Ayan. So, yung information search. Dahil, um, ano na tayo ngayon eh, um, nasa information uh, world na tayo. So, dahil sobrang relevant ng information para sa ating lahat, yung mga dictators, you have the information, it means you will own a large portion of the ecosystem. Next is milkers. They will ex- extract more values from the ecosystem that then they contribute. Example, online travel agents or aggregators. So, um, they will, um, kung dati, parang di ba yung mga website, website lang, they can provide yun, yung mga, kanil ba, airline ka, may website ka, they can provide the flights. Pero yung mga milkers, they will provide the flights, the accommodation, kung may mga packages, kung mayroong mga tickets for this particular um, tourist spot, so, yun, so they will also provide for that. And last one are the niche players. So here, they will offer specialized services and niches niche skills distinguishing them from others in the ecosystem. So, what are they going to do with this? So, trip advisor. So, bukod doon sa mga services that they can provide, meron pa silang ibang parang um, something new that they will offer para um, you, para, para kunin mo yung service that they are providing. For example, sa trip advisor, yan, may mga packages na yan ng mga Ano ba, three, four, um, ano ba, three days and two nights, ganyan. Tapos, so yun, and they can give you different discounts kung saan man kayo pupunta. So, yun, so those are niche players. Okay, and we also have different um, terms here in the digital tourism ecosystem. We're in, um, alam naman na natin itong different terms na to, but it has quite a quite helpful meaning when it comes to the e-tourism. When we say productivity, ayan, or this sub, the particular country or particular business is a productive one, it means it is the ability to provide innovations that improve the efficiency of ecosystem functions. When they say it's productive, you are able to give new inventions or you will have innovation from your from what is already present in-improve mo yun para magkaroon ng efficiency sa um, e-tourism uh, uh, ecosystem. Next is, when we say robustness, the ability to withstand ex- external shocks. Alam naman natin na dahil continuously changing ang technology, if there is something that will that happen, um, when you are robust enough, ibig sabihin, kaya mong lagpasan yung mga external shocks na yun or mga nangyari outside of your control and diversity is your capacity to create new entities or to create new niches using niches it's a market so yun so when you diversify yourself it's a bit like we provide ka ng different services into a new segment market segment so yun so those are our um different terms that we will encounter in ethereum next is and this figure is a figure, or it just shows different waves of IT adop- adoption in the world. Okay, if we're going to look at it in the 700s, industrial revolution to. So, ito yung mga nag-arise in different factories. Yan, so, yun. So, yan yun. Ito yung panahon na to. So, ang uso dito is the mechanization. Kaya yung mga trabaho dyan, yung mga mechaniko, yun. So, yung mga... Ganito ko silang panahon kita ang anak. Ayan yung mga skills that they have. Why? The same. Ayan yung sa panahon nila. So yung lista, industrial revolution. But again, it changes. Kaya nga siya, nagkaroon ng adoption. So from the, I think, one-fourth ng 1800s, papunta sa 1900s, nagkaroon na ng electric revolution. 
Ayan, so ito na uso na yung mga kliyente. Una is about the steam power. Kasi na uso na yung mga uh, kuryente na. So, there, there comes the electricity. So, yan. And then, after the electric revolution, hindi pa rin natapos ang IT adoption natin or the technology. It became digital revolution. I think na andito na tayo sa digital revolution. What will happen here? So, may electronics, there are digital networks, ito na yung mga e-tourism, e-travel. Imagine that, di ba? Parang, before you travel, bibili ka muna ng ticket mo. Pwede sa airport mismo, pwede mong sinong company yung bibenta ng ticket. Ganyan. Pero ngayon, dahil sa digitalize na nga lahat, what will happen is, you can book right at your, at the comfort of your home. So, yun. So, and different pa ang mga um, tinulong sa atin ng technology. And, ayan. So, nagkaroon na din pala ng another revolution would be, which would be the fourth revolution. Ito na yung pumapasok ng artificial intelligence. Although, it's 2020 onwards, so, parang we can, um, we can foresee in the future kung ano na yung pwede magyari in the ecosystem. Baka mas, ano na, mas, um, alam mo yung kahit hindi ka na umalis sa bahay mo na kapag travel ka na, it could happen, di ba? So yun, because of the artificial intelligence. So yun, so that this is the waves of IT adoption. Ayan, ito din yung different um uh, software, different websites or social media that were um, discovered or na kasimula. Ayan, in the, in different types. So from 1995. So here in the internet and technology developments, ayan, we have, kunalan niyo pa dati, we have Hotmail, ayan, tapos, ayan, there in the 1995 to 2000, na-discover ang Google search. We have Skype, ayan, iPhone, iPod, iPod, sorry, um, ayan, Amazon, um, HoloLens, ayan, here in the e-commerce and social media developments in attention. Facebook, Twitter, Spotify, WeChat, and so on, so TikTok also. So, and, and in the tourism naman, in hospitality industry, we have before, I don't know, if, alam nyo pa ito, ayan, um, travel web, Expedia also, from, 19, I think, 1996 or 1997 ang Expedia. Nagkaroon na rin ng trip advisor, kayak, and home away. And it sounds familiar. Airbnb, alam mo, it's more familiar with us. Um, ayan, so, nabalik or mas in-improve yung Expedia, the Velocity, Home Away, and, ayan, Open Table also was, um, was bought by Princeton. So, yun, so these are the different technologies that were discovered or na-utilized or nagpasimula into these different times. What is the implication of this? So, you're going to see, um, kung i-compare niya yan, halimbawa sa social media, what happens here in this, for example, um, kung, kung nakabutan niya yung friends tour dati, so yun, wala lang siya dito. Pero, I think, mga time yon ng mga 2000, ganun, nung nauso yung mga friends tour, ayan, yung mga vlogger, vlogspot, mga ganyan. So, yun, so, kung ma this or kung babalikan niyo yun, Sobrang laki na difference compared to the different social media that we have right now. Facebook, kahit na TikTok, di ba? WeChat, and whatever it is. So, yun. At ganyan din, syempre, doon sa mga tourism and hospitality industry technologies and website that were um, discovered or that were implemented um, as time passes by. So, yun. So, this is the digital technological environment, the digital tourism ecosystem. So again, we discussed what are the things or what the, what are in the environment or the ecosystem of digital tourism. So um, we're done with the first part of this video lesson. So in the second lesson, we will discuss the diffusion of innovation theory and the other things about the digital technological environment in the region industry. Okay, thank you so much for listening. I hope to see you on the next videos.